a couple of points to wrap up with before we finish, is that for those of you that have been doing investigative work, on the most part, the clerks and the recorders, the public recorders in counties and, and in, in towns, do not have the knowledge of the original public record. All of it is corporate. And so their guidelines state very clearly that a will or even a notice of a will cannot be recorded unless it has been granted probate. So that's how the corporate system has closed off anyone having legitimate public record of recording a will. Remember, they don't want anyone to have the ability to prove that there is public record of the recording of a will. Because if they do, they can't be intestate and obviously they cannot do their probate song and dance. So that has been an issue. And I'm not suggesting people rush off and try and be belligerent because I don't think it's fair. If you're dealing with ignorant people, there's no point putting yourself in jeopardy. We will work around that. But I have suggested, and a number have already started to do this, go and find the original public acts that created the recording and the records, the county record systems in your particular areas. So at least you can refer to those public acts that are still enforced from which the corporate system derives its power. It is well worth it. It is well worth being able to recall those public acts, not the codes from which their power is sourced. Well, we've come to the uh, end of the hour and I wanted to give you an update in terms of the uh, money, an update in terms of the workbenches and then we'll wrap up the call tonight. It's been a lot of work just going through these documents and thanks to all of you who've stayed on the line and, and, and been listening to the call. As you know, the global money system is coming to an end. It's coming to a close and despite of all the tricks they're trying to do, it is terminal. In the meantime, what we've been working on is the workbenches and the tools by which to help create the communities. Before we have invested, or I would not say so before, but in parallel to the time that we've been doing investing with the communities has been the work to help you as individuals. Very hard to think in terms of community. It's very hard to think in terms of cooperation if you are under attack, if your home is, is faced with ruin, if you are facing prison, if you are facing the loss of, of any form of survival. And many of you and many people come to UK here and come to other forms of suggested remedy at that point of the 11th hour when you are facing dire distress. So I'm hoping that the work you're seeing in terms of will and testament and the work that you hear from these calls helps you through that. The community work has been continuing and, and what I've been saying to people is just finding a way to uh, release money, to release a new form of money without there being the tools of how communities work more effectively would be a retrograde step. And so the work in terms of workbenches and tools continues where we can show you how the system itself can provide the accounting and statistical information without you having to be an accountant. Where it shows the ability to how you can buy and sell goods without having to manually set up a system. Where markets are really the ability to advertise for services, provide price lists, to provide ways of managing your membership, your customer base, your supplier base efficiently and effectively without you having to invest in infrastructure, having to recreate, having to relearn or having to basically go backwards to manage it manually, those things again are being built into the workbench and tool set. Because at the end of the day, the challenge that we face is not simply uh, an absence of energy. It's not the energy has gone away, it's that we have lost the art of working together as a community. When groups like Walmart came in and pulled the heart out of our communities, 
what we lost is the art of working together as a community. These are the tools that we need to do, and it's been taking a long time to, to get those ready, but they are becoming ready. And when it comes to the bank, when it comes to the ability to borrow credits, to purchase a home, to start a business, to buy equipment, to exchange, to share, those services are released at a community level. And I mentioned that last week. Those services are done at a community level. They're not done by me. They're not done by anyone who has been working uh, on these elements. It's done at a community level. If the community has not been registered, the community has not got its charter in order, the community does not have a bank account set up for the conversion of fiat currency into the credits, then the community is not ready to provide those services. So there's a lot of work going on that, and I'm, I'm looking forward to finishing off this work and sharing with you that. At the same time, of course, we have historical matters like All Saints Day on October 31st. Well, that's, uh, that's everything from me tonight. I thank you. I thank you for listening. I thank you for sharing. I thank you for encouraging others to come on. I look forward to your questions, answering your questions, your comments. And above all, thank you. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you for helping wake people up. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for also for coming to this and adding your commentary. Because this is a community model. This is an open source model. I look forward, I look forward now to answering your questions and uh, hearing your comments. Okay. All right, well, let's have a look and see what comments people have made in the call. And if you want to speak, please press star 8 or hash 8. I'd love to hear from you through the uh, audio live. Okay. We've got a question here. Uh, let's see if we go back to see if I don't, gonna, I don't want to... Okay. Question is, this is an earlier question. If, I, if someone else has a question prior to this, Please retype it. But Klaus from Iowa asked the question, I thought the word last should be excluded from the will and testament. Apologies there, uh, slight technical hitch, doesn't help when uh, I get booted off the call. Uh, yes, uh, I, I take that on, uh, on advice that the word last does not need to be there, so I'm happy to see that being removed. Thanks Klaus for that. Uh, moving to the next question, and I hope we can get some callers on uh, who, who want to, uh, to speak. Um, I'm just reloading this window because of that booting. One moment, uh, so I can actually see uh, who has uh, come on to speak. I'll be one moment as we just reload that window. We keep going with the questions. I'm just going to ask those that have asked questions uh, when I reload, I'm going to miss seeing your questions. So, could I please ask those that did type in questions into the chat, can you please uh, retype them? I'm sorry that we lost that. Um, that audio there and we've got back on, could you please uh, retype your questions into the chat so we can see them. In the meantime, is, if there's anyone that would like to speak, please press star 8 or hash 8. I'd love to speak with you. Klaus, uh, thank you, has added the question. Again, I'm sorry I've lost your questions, so please type them in. The question says, do we use uh, 8.5 by 14 legal size paper or commercial size. I would presume legal size is the correct uh, size class. Uh, Jeanette asked a question, 
As Queen of Great Britain is a fictitious title, wouldn't it be better to write Elizabeth Alexander Mary of Windsor? Uh, Jeanette, it's all fiction. An estate is a legal fiction. Uh, a corporate is a legal fiction. A person is a legal fiction. What we're making a distinction of here is that there is a structure that existed prior to the corporate takeover of the estate, which created a, if you like, a double ganger. And we are appealing to that underlying structure, even though it is a fictional structure. So I, I hope that makes it clear. Yes, it's all fiction, but we're making a distinction between a structure that we would typically call the uh, de jour, the, uh, the estate, the estate on the land and all those structures. Or in fact, we even refer to it when we talk about common law, because much of it was created at the time of Henry VIII. That's what we're referring to. Uh, before I answer any more questions in the chat, and thank you for all of those that are retyping in your questions. I really appreciate it. Remember, please put the word question first and, and then your question. Let's get to the first caller here who wants to speak live. Hello, uh, New Jersey. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi. Hi, how are you? My name is Victoria. Good. And um, Hi, I'm actually... I'm very, very glad to meet you. Um, I've had so many interesting things that have brought me to you guys on my journey, and um, I'm very new to all of this. Actually, this is my first call, and um, I have a whole bunch of questions. I don't want to waste too much time with you, but the first one I'm wondering, is there a place that I could find a mentor or a guide that could help me understand this process better? Absolutely. We haven't got the community uh, workbenches up yet, but the community workbenches will be a place for you to go and find those within your uh, local area. But in the meantime, on the University of Acadia, uh, albeit it's a little bit clunky still, you find that there are the forums. And what I, what I think is a great idea in the interim, you know, at least in the next few weeks as, as we, we build a, a more streamlined a way of doing this, go to university.ukd.info and uh, look at the forums and go into the forums and there you can post and ask for those that are in your area uh, to contact. I'll give you two other ways also to make contact with people. This is for the broader audience as well. There are a number of Ukadia groups through Skype and if you type in the word Ukadia, you'll find those groups and that's one way to, to ask to join them. If you find that a UKD group does not suit the particular uh, members of your area and you want to start your own UKD group on Skype, then that's a great way. That's another. And of course, there are a number of groups uh, on Facebook now uh, by typing UKDA or One Heaven. So there's three different ways to get in contact with people who uh, may be able to help you share research uh, work with you and I hope one or if not all three of those ways work for you until the workbenches are up. Does that help? Yes, very much so. Um, my second question is um, would this process change if somebody was an heir? Yes, the, the, the word heir is a is, is I'd have to say to you that there's unfortunately a corrupted history with the word heir and right. you may or may not be aware of that. Mm -hmm. The original meaning of heir was, of course, uh, a, a man or woman that had a rightful claim uh, through a, a, a testamentum. And then they corrupted it. And so they introduced the maxim, which you may or may not have heard, is that a will deprives an heir. Have you heard right. that before? A will deprives an heir? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, the reason that a, a, a will deprives an heir is that uh, since the mid of 19th century, uh, we're having a hard time finding if any wills in their system have been developed to such an extent that they can eliminate the claim of a will having to go to probate. So pretty much every will from the end of the 19th century to the present day has gone through probate. That's why when you, you, you talk of wills or you talk of intestate, Pretty, pretty much everyone presumes that it always go to probate, correct? Correct. 
Yeah, well, under the rules that the Roman corporate system, not the original, but the corporate system 